Welcome to Rao Online. Uh, today's topic is drugs in assisted reproductive technology. So, ovulation disorders account for 25 percent of the causes of subfertility. The goal of ovulation induction is to achieve development of a single follicle and subsequent ovulation in women with anovulation. The selection of the most appropriate treatment for ovulation disorders depends upon reaching the correct diagnosis. Patients should be fully informed of the treatment options available the success of each treatment option and the associated risks. WHO classification of ovulation disorders includes group 1 hypothalamic pituitary failure approximately 10 percent, group 2 dysfunctions of the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis around 85 percent, group 3 ovarian failure around 5 percent. The maximum uh, group of patients which lie in the group 2 including the PCOS patients and this forms the maximum incidence of 85 percent. The next commonest is the hypo-hypo patient which is 10 percent and the least commonest is the ovarian failure patient which is around 5 percent. Normogonadotropic anovulation that is WHO group 2 is a heterogeneous group. It is present either with regular cycles oligomenorrhea or even amenorrhea. The mid luteal serum progesterone is low, FSH and prolactin levels are normal and most of these patients are likely to have PCOS. Other causes of anovulation normogonadotropic include congenital adrenal hyperplasias, adrenal tumors and androgen producing ovarian tumors. Flowchart of diagnosis and treatment. So, take the history and examination, measure the serum FSH and prolactin levels. If the prolactin is high, do the pituitary imaging and TSH. For hyperprolactinemia, we give them dopamine agonist like cabergolin. And if there is a prolactinomas, my, micro or macro, they may rarely need surgery. If FSH is high, we need to do the karyotype and the autoantibody titers. And um, these patients, if they we are dealing with a karyotypic genetic disorder, so we should go for donor X. If FSH is low and the pituitary imaging is done and body weight is measured, and these patients usually are the patients of anorexia nervosa or any um, pituitary tumors. So, these patients are called as hypogonadotropic hypogonadism that is WHO group 1 and we can treat them with pulsatile GnRH therapy which has come recently. We can treat them with gonadotropins and we can ask them to put do weight gain in case of bulimia nervosa. If the FSH is normal, we need to check the body weight and do a pelvic ultrasound and then uh, these patients are normal gonadotropic anovulation and these form in group WHO group 2 and we advise them weight reduction anti estrogens we do ovulation induction with letrozole uh, and if they are PCOD they might benefit from insulin sensitizing agents like metformin myoinositols, we give them gonadotropins and ovarian drilling might also be an option for them. Obese PCOD patients will benefit from weight loss. They respond well to clomiphene citrate or aromatase inhibitors. If the PCOD patient is not responding to clomiphene or letrozole, we can give them gonadotropins for ovulation induction and insulin sensitizing agents or laparoscopic ovarian drilling may be considered in those patients who are not responding to clomiphene citrate. Overweight and obese patients have higher incidence of ovulation disorders and subfertility. Ovulation induction with clomiphene in overweight and obese women results in lower ovulation rates and lower live birth rates. So, if the woman has to get good results with clomiphene citrate, she needs to lose weight and women with BMI of 25 to 28 need a gonadotropin dose 50 percent higher than normal weight women. So, to increase the response to gonadotropins, she also needs to lose weight. So, overweight and obesity treatment also requires losing weight. Multiple studies have shown that weight loss is associated with spontaneous ovulation rates in PCOD women. After losing just less than 5 percent of the body weight, they become ovulatory. Weight loss is therefore recommended as first line therapy in obese women with or without PCOS seeking pregnancy. Lifestyle modification is the first form of therapy combining behavioral dietary and exercise management.
Reduced energy diets like 500 to 1000 kilocalorie per day reduction are effective options for weight loss. A person should aim to reduce body weight by 7 to 10 percent over a period of 6 to 10 months. A structured exercise is important component of a weight loss regimen and aim for about more than 30 minutes of aerobics or cardio per day. And these interventions should be conducted prior to ovulation induction.